Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Creative Kyle's Video Adrenaline Series for Premiere Pro. Today, I want to show you a bit about how to use transitions inside of Premiere Pro. Now, as experienced editors, you probably have a pretty good idea of how this works, but there are some subtle changes as well as some nuances that you're going to want to pick up on. Let's explore. If I double click on the clip, you see it loads up into the source side, and the in and the out points are marked. In this particular case, we have adequate handles on both sides for a transition. A handle is the extra frames left over in the clip that you're not using. So if you want to create a cross dissolve between two clips, even though they may look like this in the timeline, the area in which they dissolve actually mixes frames. So you have those unused frames up there in the source monitor that are being used from both the outgoing and the incoming clip. If you don't have adequate handles, you can't add a transition. Or in Premiere Pro, if you do add the transition, some very unusual things happen, which we'll take a look at in a moment. So let's go ahead and just do a pretty standard transition here. We'll troll this down and we'll start with our cross dissolve and we'll just bring that over and drop it on the cut. Notice as we drag here, we could place it so it ends at the cut, starts at the cut, or is centered on the cut. And that's really up to you. Let's play that through. There we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and smooth that out a little bit by making some changes to the transition itself. Let's just double click on it so it's loaded and you see it comes up here in the effect controls. I like to actually see the actual sources, but by default it's going to look like that. You're just going to see the A and the B icons. I like to go ahead and click that, so I click the play button here and I get a nice little preview of the transition in that window there so I could see it. Obviously that's pretty small, but it's nice because you don't have to render, you don't have to leave the window there, you can make tweaks. If I want to adjust the duration here, I want to point something out that's pretty important. Notice that this transition is 106. Here's the huge gotcha. Premiere measures its default transition not as time, but as frames. So if you're working with a bunch of transitions and you're in a 24p sequence and you drag on a transition, the default value is 30 frames. Here's how you change that. If we go up to Premiere Pro and Preferences, we can come down here to General, and you'll see that it has the default length for the video transition. What's unusual is that audio is in seconds, but the video transitions are in frames. So you're going to want to go in and tweak this preference so it matches what you need for your primary sequence type. If you mostly work in 24p, change this to 24. You do 25, set to 25. If you're working in 60, go to 60. Same idea here. So let's go ahead and we'll switch this over to 24 and click OK. And that's going to change all future transitions. However, we can tweak this current transition pretty easily. If I'll just click on the duration here. I can type in a new duration in the second. There we go, 2 colon 0, 0 for 2 seconds. And I apply it. And you see we have our default transition. Now, the transition itself can be repositioned. As we drag here, you'll notice that it's putting in zebra stripes. That's indicating that it's using a freeze frame to finish out the effect. So if you see those zebra stripes and you're doing something like a cross dissolve or a wipe and you want the source video to stay in constant motion, you're going to need to do a few things. You can shorten the dissolve, change the speed of the transition, you can reposition it by simply dragging up here. And notice there that it snaps into place, and that's now good. There's no zebra stripes. We can go ahead and watch that back in real time, and we see our effect. Let's go on to the next effect for a second here. We'll go ahead and drag over another cross dissolve. And notice that it's only letting us start at the cut. That's because there's not enough handles on one of these clips. If I double click on the transition, I'll see that there are no incoming handles for this clip. So we can do a couple of things here. We can leave it be, start it, cut, 
or we could actually start to drag here and pull. And notice as we do that, watch what happens. The clip duration and the timeline changes. So essentially when you do this, you are performing trimming operations on your timeline while adjusting it in the effect controls window. So that's really up to you if you want to do that. That would now allow us to sort of reposition that for a center at cut, or we could just pick right from the menu here, center at cut. And if we watch that back, you'll see it's clean. Let's undo a couple of steps here. And we're going to change that to center at cut. And I want you to watch what happens with those zebra stripes. See how it starts with the freeze frame and then goes into full motion? So those zebra stripes are indicating a freeze. Now, that's a problem when working with cross dissolves or other transitions where you see the frames. But if you're going to go with something like, say, a dip to white, and we drop that on, you'll notice here that you never see that freeze frame because it's transitioning through a white flash. So sometimes those zebra stripes are actually good. It's saying, hey, I'm using a freeze frame, but with the transition you've chosen, you don't really see it. So just be mindful as you're working with those effects. And the best way is to just simply double click and work up here in the effect controls so you can adjust the transition as you want. Drag the effect handles there for the transition and you're entering a new duration. Grab it in the middle and you could sort of slip it side to side. Click right on the point there and you're actually doing a bit of a ripple edit and it'll make changes right in the timeline. So, tremendous flexibility, more so than any other nonlinear editor I've seen before, and this really opens up power as you want to refine those transitions. For Creative Cow, my name's Rich Harrington. I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out the online forums as well as extra podcasts by clicking on the podcast tab or taking a look at the video tutorials. Thanks again. <laughs> <laughs>